Hello everyone, I'm JG and welcome back to Music Forever, where today we're reviewing Linkin Park's sixth studio album, The Hunting Party. When it comes to Linkin Park in this point in their career, many people, myself included, had kind of come under the assumption that Linkin Park really weren't going to be returning to their heavier roots. The days of hybrid theory and Meteora and the new metal, angry sound was you know, the thing of the past, really. It happened, it was important, but it had passed, really, and had come to be replaced by a more alternative rock, kind of electronic rock, even, Linkin Park. Now, if you remember from my last review, the most recent project that Linkin Park had put out was a remix album of their last studio album, Living Things. It was recharged, and it was, you know, an EDM-inspired remix album. Argu arguably the most pop and uh, electronically influenced sound that Linkin Park had done up to that point, really and something that probably would have alienated a lot more fans had it not been, you know, just a remix album that was kind of a side project that, you know, people can kind of toss aside and say, I really don't care for this, but I don't really feel that bad because it's only a remix album. The thing is, we were kind of wrong, though. Blake and Park were not done with their heavier days. In fact, some of their heaviest days were, you know, just coming to us now with The Hunting Party. Which sees Linkin Park kind of returning back to the heavier sound that they had before, but with losing some of the new metal and kind of uh, you know, kind of cliches that were kind of present in their sound at the time, really. Here, this album, I wouldn't quite say it's a new metal album, it's more of an alternative metal type album, a hard rock album, even at times. And while the rapping is still there and things of that sort, just really in the form of Mike Shinoda's rapping itself, a lot of the instrumentation doesn't seem super based on, like, hip-hop elements, really. There's no super crazy, like, DJ scratching moments. Uh, while they are still present, they're not super, you know, in the forefront like they were maybe on albums like Hybrid Theory and Meteora and things of that sort. Uh, the instrumentation here feels a lot more just, you know, metal and rock oriented for the most part. And that's the thing about this album that I do really enjoy. It kind of is a bit of a throwback in the sense that it goes back to a heavier sound, but at the same time, it's doing a different heavy sound. And in that regard, it's almost like an entirely new beast. Once again, Linkin Park is tackling another new sound here. It just happens to be one that many people would probably be okay with, given that, you know, it is heavier, and that's what many people wanted Linkin Park to go back to doing ever since, ever since they really kind of put out Minutes to Midnight and maybe disappointed some fans, really. And the thing is, throughout this album, we have a lot of aggression shown here, and you do occasionally do have some softer moments thrown in there as well. But from the beginning of the opening track, Keys to the Kingdom, you know that this is going to be a more aggressive album, given that it starts off with Chester screaming right from the beginning. Right when first listening to this album when I got it, I knew that this was going to be a good project just based on that opening scream from Chester. Uh, this track here is very aggressive, probably one of the most aggressive Linkin Park I put out. You have Chester screaming, Mike doing a more aggressive rapping part, and even later on he has a more softer singing part thrown in there as well. You also have some nice guitar parts thrown in there as well, making it a very overall, very cohesive and a very, you know, just a very aggressive way to start this album type of song, which is very enjoyable. You also have cuts like War, which is more of a, I guess you would say, shorter, kind of almost punk leaning type aggressive song in a sense. It reminds me of tracks like Given Up in terms of like the overall sound, but this one may be even a bit more aggressive than that and a bit more, you know, just to the point to a degree, I guess you could say. You also have the track Guilty All the Same, which features veteran rapper Rakim, who, you know, is just a legend at this point. And, you know, having him feature on a Linkin Park song is super awesome to begin with, given that I'm a fan of his work as well as Linkin Park. Uh, the song itself really regarding, not regarding his verse rather, but really just the Linkin Park aspect of the song is a very aggressive, a guitar driven type track. It has a long guitar intro which kind of builds up. And once again, it shows Linkin Park abandoning their electronic uh, elements that were present on Living Things and especially Recharged and replacing them with these heavy sort of alternative metal type of guitar riffs and things of that sort. And then you have the verse from Akeem himself, which is awesome. Uh, you know, some people might say, why wasn't it just done by Mike? But really, you know, the whole aspect of having a guest feature, especially in the context of what the song is talking about, it makes a lot of sense in my opinion, and his verse is just fantastic. And the guest feature on Guilty All the Same leads me on to the next thing I wanted to talk about, which was the guest features on this album. And that really is that this is the first, you know, Linkin Park album, studio album, that is, that really has prominent guest features on it that are really credited and things of that sort. Of course, there were the remix albums I mentioned before, which were filled with guest features and artists, and of course the Jay-Z collaboration for the Collision Course EP, which of course was just as much a Jay-Z project as it was a Linkin Park one. But here we have Linkin Park, you know, featuring some artists here on their songs. And I think the selection they make is rather good. 
You also have Paige Hamilton of Helmet on the track, All For Nothing. He provides a very powerful chorus here. You have Darren Malachi and guitarist of System of a Down on the track Rebellion. He, you know, he instantly when you hear that track, you could just kind of pick up on the fact that it is him guitaring because it just has that sort of sound that is, you know, you know, very much his own, I guess you could say. If you're familiar with his guitar work, you just know it kind of has a sound of its own and that's very present here on the track Rebellion. And overall, combining his guitaring skills with, you know, just the Linkin Park whole makes for a very interesting and enjoyable track on this project. You also have Tom Morello, guitarist of Rage Against the Machine, on the track Drawbar, which is the instrumental here. And it's very interesting considering it doesn't really show off a lot of the aggression that I think Tom Morello might be known for, known for in his guitaring style. Of course, Rage Against the Machine, kind of an aggressive band, I, you know, typically most people would say. And here, this track is very much a bit more laid back and just softer in its sound, which kind of surprised me at first. Uh, but it is an instrumental that I do enjoy. It's not one of the standouts on the album, in my opinion, but it is still a good instrumental. And the feature, I think, does work well. Despite the fact that a lot of this album is, you know, a more typical alternative metal type aggression for the most part, there are some softer moments that do pop up occasionally, like the track The Final Masquerade, for example, which is more of just a softer Lincoln like, Park track that I feel like could have appeared on, like, Minutes to Midnight, for example, or a track like Until It's Gone, which does have a bit more of an electronic feel to it, maybe something that would have fit more on Living Things. And the thing is, while these tracks do have sounds that could have appeared on those albums that I just mentioned before, they still incorporate elements that are kind of consistent throughout the hunting party within them. It just kind of allows them to fit into this track listing very nicely and not kind of stand out as being, you know, like these tracks definitely didn't belong on this album. They definitely do belong here and they do sound good in the context of the greater album. And you know, those are just a couple of tracks out of the whole album. The rest of it is pretty much aggressive. And of course, you do have some more underrated tracks here like Mark the Graves, which is one that I do hear some fans give praise to, but one I really don't hear talked about enough because I think it is a really good song. I do like the tension that this track builds, especially uh, Chester's singing here on this track. It just, you know, has a very emotional feel to it for the most part. And then you have the closing track, A Lion in the Sand, which kind of feels like this longer, maybe even a sort of epic type track. I'm not quite sure if I would say if it is an epic really song, but I feel like it's possibly going for that. And I do like how it has multiple sort of things going on to it. You have the softer singing from Mike at parts, and you have the more aggressive moments that come in from Chester. But overall, despite the fact that this track tries to do a lot here and doesn't actually manage to incorporate a lot of things into it, it's not one of the standouts in my opinion. And overall, it's one of the weaker songs in the track listing, just, just in my own personal opinion, that is. Somewhat like I alluded to earlier, despite the fact that this album it goes more for a typical sort of, you know, standard rock direction in terms of the sound, the elements of hip-hop are still present to a degree, especially Mike's rapping, which is there in a lot of songs itself. Mike definitely doesn't have a lack of a presence here on this album like he did on Minutes to Midnight. He's very much present here providing verses. Uh, you do have some songs that maybe are a bit more typical in their structure, like Wastelands, for example, which just has Mike rapping the verses and then Chester singing the choruses of the song. And, you know, in that regard, it may be a bit more similar to a track like the first two albums or Living Things in terms of the structure, but it does have, it has a sound that's very different from those albums, that sort of alternative metal, uh, hard rock type of sound, which definitely distinguishes it from those albums. I don't think Wastelands would have fit at home on either three of those albums I mentioned before, and that's a good thing. The musicianship on this album as a whole, I think, is greatly improved from Linkin Park's previous works. While I, while I am a massive Linkin Park fan, I, I am the first to really admit that as far as technicality goes, I don't think I would consider Linkin Park would be up there in terms of, you know, technical bands, really. They managed to work with some very simple sounds, but mix them up in a way that's so, you know, interesting that it doesn't really matter if they're rather simple guitar riffs and things of that sort. But on the hunting party here, they, you know, improve on their skills here. The guitar parts, like I mentioned earlier, are a bit more complex and interesting. You have some more guitar solo-like moments. Which, while Linkin Park started really incorporating those in on during Minutes to Midnight, here they're just a lot more present and they make a lot of sense in the context of the record as a whole. Like, I'm guilty all the same that I mentioned before. Just the intro of that track, just kind of how it builds up with the guitar. It builds up a lot of tension and it's just awesome, in my opinion. The drumming is also greatly improved here. Everyone in the band seems to be firing on all cylinders and it's noticeable that they've all really kind of improved at their craft here on this album. And they're definitely not, you know, afraid to flaunt it here. Another aspect I think needs to kind of be talked about when speaking about this album is the concept behind the record that, you know, is present in the lyrics here, and that kind of being the aspect of being sort of a carnivore, kind of a hunter 
here, and you know, in the regards to the music industry at the time, Linkin Park were kind of noticing how lots of the rock bands at the time were, you know, poppier, more radio friendly, and things of that sort. And to this day, actually, they still, I guess you could say, are to a degree. If you look at the you know rock bands that are really popular, oftentimes they do have a poppier sound to them, especially you know with the whole '80s throwback sort of trend that's been going on recently. And you know, Linkin Park, they initially, I believe, wanted to go in that sort of direction with their sound. But they decided instead to go in the complete opposite direction to kind of be a bit more aggressive with their sound, and hence the sort of carnivore hunting party kind of message that's present throughout this entire album. You could see it in the lyrics here, uh, of course, on tracks like Rebellion and Keys to the Kingdom, for example, or All for Nothing and War. And, you know, on tracks like Guilty All the Same, like I mentioned before, how it just, you know, kind of feels like they're calling out people maybe in the music industry themselves who are just as guilty as, you know, someone else for maybe some of the fault in the music industry at the time. I'm not exactly sure who. Maybe they're talking about specific artists. Maybe they're talking about, you know, business people involved. I'm not 100% sure, but it is rather cool. And I do believe everything on this album does kind of tie back into that greater message of, you know, kind of the hunting party, that aggressive sort of attitude. In that regard, this album reminds me a lot of my favorite Linkin Park album, A Thousand Sons which in the fact that it has a theme running through it. However, it's not a full-blown sort of like rock opera album that has a story going from track one all the way to the end. Uh, here, the theme is present throughout all these songs, but you know, it's not a story really. You don't start with track one and it, you know, progresses all the way through. It's just really a theme that's present in all these songs here to various degrees. So overall, I have to say I really like the concept of this album. I like how Linkin Park were going in a different direction than what was really popular at the time because even with their previous album, Living Things, it was definitely more of a radio-friendly effort. Burn It Down did get a significant amount of radio airplay. And here on this album, I feel like they're kind of going in the opposite direction, kind of going against that and trying to be different in a regard. And that's not to say the sound of this album is like super original or super new or anything like that. I don't even think Linkin Park were trying to claim that that's the case. I just think that, you know, they're trying to say that this is different than what's in the mainstream right now. And I guess you could say still is different than what's in the mainstream right now. And, you know, they're trying to go against that to a degree, which I definitely do enjoy. And I think it manages to, well, while it didn't exactly break through into the mainstream or anything like that, the sound of the album ends up being fantastic, in my opinion. Overall, I'd have to say that The Hunting Party is actually one of my favorite Linkin Park albums. Not only do I really enjoy it just because, you know, it happened to come out in a period when I was really into Linkin Park, but also it does manage to capture the anger and the aggression of Linkin Park's earlier efforts without the angst that was really present in those lyrics that I've kind of grown out of with time. Here, the anger is present, but it's being aimed at a more mature subject matter. Uh, kind of like the moments on A Thousand Suns, for example, or Minutes to Minute that were also very angry, but were aimed at more political themes, for example, a more mature lyrical topic. Here, maybe not politics per se, but you know, just the music industry in general. It's something that Linkin Park, I think, definitely has the right to tackle considering that, you know, there are musicians that are in the music industry. It kind of makes sense. And it really just seems like they're lyrically tackling something that is important to them at the time instead of just, you know, the typical angst that was present on the first two albums. I like how this album improves on the musicianship that Linkin Park had before, doing some new stuff in that regard, just improving their technicality and bringing forth a very heavy, aggressive album without being redundant or like super throwbacky to the point where it's like they're just trying to re-release Hybrid Theory. This album, while being aggressive like those albums at the beginning of their career, is entirely its own and is entirely new. And you really enjoy the sound that it brings. The guest features don't feel shoehorned in or anything like that. And it doesn't feel like they were trying to pick up the most popular artists at the time just to get, you know, uh, listens or things like that. They were going with artists that they think were legitimately good for the album that helped the sound and inspirations to them as well. I can imagine that all the artists here on this album were two degrees inspirations to Linkin Park. And with that, I think this sums up my review of The Hunting Party pretty well. I think it's a very good Linkin Park album. Definitely one of my favorites from them. And uh, it's one that you should definitely check out, especially if you haven't uh, listened to Linkin Park recently and you're pretty much one of the older fans of the band who likes their more aggressive sound. Because this album, like I said before, it is a more aggressive sound. It's just not in exactly the same way as our first two albums. Yet, if the aggression is what you liked, I think you still will like this album because there is plenty of aggression to be found. However, if you're not a fan of that Linkin Park, you know, I guess you won't like this album. But that's not me, so I really don't care in that regard. Overall, yeah. Good album, and I definitely recommend it to you. 
And while you're here, make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on future Linkin Park reviews because I am reviewing all their albums here on my channel. You can check out a playlist with that in the description. It'll take you to uh, the playlist which has all my Linkin Park reviews and it's going to be on screen here at the end of the video as well. You can just click on that and it'll take you there as well. Comment down below your thoughts on The Hunting Party. Where do you think it stands in Linkin Park's discography? And stay golden, guys.